Well, good afternoon, or should I say good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another live broadcast here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. The last of the Mohicans, Randy, here in the regular season. We are here at Tully Stadium where tonight the Walla Bulldogs will try to stop a two-game losing streak as they'll take on the Stratford Spartans. I'm Mike Prince, and he is Mr. Randy Allen. How you doing, sir? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us this evening. It's going to be a great night for football. We hope the Bulldogs are able to stop that two-game losing streak and come out on the right side of the game. On the right side of the game. That's well, right. Last week, the Bulldogs face of uh, the Brenham Cubs ended up losing by the score of 37-21. Prior to that, they were in, uh, uh, I guess, a battle of wheels against Magnolia West, losing 56-44. to And now it's probably the toughest game of those three games that we counted out at the beginning of the season, and that being the Stratford part here at home. Stratford comes in tonight on top of 5A Region 3, District 19, with a 6-0 and record overall in district and 6-3 and overall throughout the course of the regular season. The Brenham Cubs are at 5-1. and They come in with a 6-3 and overall record, and the Walla Bulldogs currently holding down a third slot with a 4-2 and district record and 7-2 and overall. Magnolia West stands in at 3-3 three and with a 4-5 and record, and it's going to be an interesting scenario on tonight because Magnolia will be against Magnolia West and or could be a playoff game for Magnolia if they win against Mag West. Meanwhile, Mag West is trying to position themselves for the number three spot because the number three spot really kind of dictates how things go. The perfect scenario, if the Bulldogs find their way on the short end tonight, they eventually drop to the fourth slot if Magnolia West wins. So that means that the Bulldogs could possibly be facing North Forest at Cowherd Stadium or Cowherd Stadium next week to start this playoff scenario off. So it's going to be a big game for both squads involved. How are you seeing all this unfolding tonight, man? Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see the outcome. A couple, like you said, a couple of uh, key district ball games being played tonight. Um, you don't want to take things for granted. You don't want to take anything away from Magnolia playing for, for their playoff life that can really put a, a wrench in things here if they were able to upset Mag West, but you don't see that happening. Uh, so you do see uh, several different scenarios playing out, and also with our playoff team, uh, you have Yates playing for a different uh if they can pull off an upset tonight against Madison, then that would put them in the place of North Forest so the Bulldogs could come away with playing Yates. So a couple of different scenarios from our district and the other district that we would play in the playoffs. So it does make things a little bit more interesting. It makes you want to look at different schedules and, and kind of see how things shape up across the board instead of just in uh, in, in our own district play. So. Yeah, it does. It's a lot on the line, but I guess the the heart of the matter for tonight will be can the Bulldogs not beat the Bulldogs tonight? If they can go ahead and, and take advantage of some of the opportunities. You you know just like I do, Coach, that these games are about momentum, opportunity, and being able to execute when it's time to execute. Um, the Bulldogs have had some, some decisions that you and I have agreed to disagree on in the last couple of weeks on whether or not this should be or should not be, but we'll see what happens. I would love to see us take advantage of the kicking game that we do have, which I think is to our advantage. And any time that you can put any type of points on the board, i got to take those points. And we got to see what's coming on. As the Bulldogs are coming out, they're dressing. I like to call it that ice white. Man, that looks good to me. But I did notice down on the side of the field, they now have their numbers on the side of the helmet, taking that old Alabama uh, say, yeah, I like that knit me lying clean look, but I can deal with that too. They're in their all white uniforms from head to toe, um, white socks even to match the black shoes on tonight, and they also have uh, the the Spartans will be in that emerald green with the green helmets and the white uh, pants to get their line up. The Bulldogs have the steam coming through the tunnel, Randy, and it looks like they're about to break out of here at any moment. We got about four minutes before kickoff. Randy, go ahead and let the folks know 
how we're making this broadcast available on tonight. We have several sponsors that have been uh, generous to us here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. We have Galileo's Mexican Grill in Patterson. We have the Learning Tree Daycare Center. We have Green Lawn Care with James Lidke. We have Armor Industries there in Waller. We have Hempstead Independent School District. We have the Varsity Grill in Waller. Larry's Automotive. Also have the Temple of Refuge Ministries. We have the Waller Bulldog Club, which is a Waller Independent School District Booster Supporter Organization. We also have a new sponsor, Prosperity Bank. I'd like to thank Mr. Royce yeah. Wright Royce there Wright. for that. Appreciate that. And we also have the Hempstead Theater in Hempstead, newly remodeled. For your viewing pleasure. For your viewing pleasures. Thank you so much, Randy. Uh, should be a very good night on tonight. Temperatures are going to be in the uh, low 60s as the Bulldogs come through the tunnel. And really, it's a, a, a test of the Bulldogs mentally, as we've been stating the last two weeks, Randy. So they're going to go without their star running back on tonight, Eric Wright. Uh, so if I'm Coach Wright, I, I do want to work my quarterback, that in the name of Tyron, Taylor, but I don't want him so banged up that he's no good for me on the next week, which is when the season really starts anew during the playoffs. Absolutely, yeah. You don't want to over uh, overuse Tyron uh, to not by any measure. And naturally, you want to try to win the football game, but um, again, you you would like to play the third season here as it gets going. I think you made a very interesting comment earlier. As I far did. As, you sure did, man. I didn't know that. <laughs> you know, as far as the Bulldogs putting themselves in good positions to make things happen and then, you know, having a penalty or, you know, something happened to where they end up beating themselves. And, you know, I think you can put a lot of stock in that right there um, as far as some of the successes the Bulldogs have had and and also the, where they've come short. So um, I think that's very, very good and very uh, formidable observation there. Wow, you said formidable. So, that's a big word. That is that is a two dollar word on a it Friday is. night, man. That is pretty good. It sure is pretty good. We're rising for the salute to old glory. We do apologize. We don't have a crowd mic tonight. We're going simple yet powerful on tonight to get it done. Randy said he would sing for us on tonight. I don't know if he's going to hold true to that. <laughs> Only if you help me. Only if I help you. Well, I want the people to continue to listen, Randy. So we'll. we'll <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we the only reason we're talking while they're doing it so it won't be dead air for you all to get it going on. But the Bulldogs are not alone tonight. We have some other games that'll be of uh, the watching radar. The Brenham Cubs will be hosting Springwood Tigers on tonight. We have the Battle of Magnolia between Magnolia West Mustangs and the Magnolia Bulldogs. And the Patriots battle, which have Tumball Memorial and Tumball getting together at Cougar Stadium. And another game of interest that we'll be watching, of course, in Walla County, the Hempstead Bobcats are taking on the Aetna Cowboys at Cowboys Stadium. And our buddies down the road at Royal. Got one more time to try to figure it out to prevent from going 0-10. And, and with that being said, the winner of that game will take the fourth spot in the playoffs. You could have an O, a one-win team. You will. Are you talking about this Royal game? Yes. <laughs> Royal and who are they playing? Remind me. Columbia. Columbus. That's Columbus. right. Whoever wins that game will take the fourth spot in the playoffs. So you could have a one-and-nine team making the playoffs this the, the advantage of being in small rural America. Wow. Wow. Well, yeah, that's we cool for the foul. Our children are messed up. Yeah. Well, my friend, well, my friend, with that being said, we want to remind you <laughs> that you can let someone know that they can listen tonight <laughs> by simply dialing 724-444-7444. I know it's a lot of fours, but trust me, we can get you into us. Uh, the code is 46493. Bulldogs are out meeting at the 50-yard line. Looks like Zinka 
Uh, Bradley Zika, Cole Gagley, Cameron Rape, and Tyron Taylor. Tyron Taylor, the four horsemen, if you will, for the Bulldogs. I'll take it. Now, Randy, if you're Coach White, you win the toss, you want the ball or you want to defer? Good question. Very good question. But it looks like Stafford won the toss, and they're going to defer, defer, which means the Bulldogs will be receiving. The Bulldogs will be going from our left to right. The teams are getting all their instructions lined up and on the way, and it looks like we're going to be lined up and on the way here, my friend, in just a moment. But I think to answer the question, I think if I would have won the toss, I'd want to take the ball. I would want to get the ball first and try to set a set a pre- precedence there with my offense and hopefully put a good drive together and go down and, and score and try to get a little momentum. A little mojo? Try to get a little mojo going. A little mojo going. The teams are in position, and we're just about ready to get things on the way. We would also like to acknowledge and recognize coaches Mark Morales and Daniel Tice. They will be – Daniel says he's going to have some stats for us, man. Can you believe that? That guy's a genius. He's a genius. He got all his laptops and everything locked and loaded, ready to go. These guys have tablets, and we just have pen and paper. It's old meat in the young. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Stafford's ready to kick off, and this game is on the way. It is a high short kick bouncing around, and it is picked up at the 27-yard line and finally pushed out of bounds, look like Wagner, as we will start this contest off here in the first quarter play, and the Bulldogs will position themselves. Very interesting. Uh, very good kick for Stratford as far as, your concern, as, far as they're concerned. Uh, Bulldogs will start their possession on the near hash, 26-yard line. Interesting question for you. That question? High school. Receivers, gloves or no gloves? No gloves. You're not going to get a catch. Okay, there's a keeper or uh, the give to the back, running to the left side, getting close to the 30 yard line, up to the 28 for Jacob. Yeah, Jacob could do uh, a little cross buck trot, top play, uh, fake to one back and go the opposite direction with the other back. And back to what I don't think that we've seen yet. What's that? This year from the Bulldogs in the two-back set like that. Well, you know, t- uh, t- uh, time brings about a change. And when you don't have an Eric Wright, you got to go to the next best thing. You're right. Double pistol look now for Taylor. He takes it, and he gives it to Kadu. Derek. Oh, that was Derek Wright running up to the 40-yard line to get the first first down tonight for the Bulldogs. Ball is at the 40-yard line. Good run by Derek. little hand sweep right there, and he kind of cut it back against the grain. Got up right in the hole, and then that's what you expect to see from him right there. Uh, looked like he was a little timid last week when he was running, but he really hit that hit that hard and looked good. So back to action now. There's a play-action pass, and that ball was over the intended receiver in the left flat as it will be second down and 10 for the Bulldogs. I, mean, I think that's one of the things that the Bulldogs are going to have to do tonight is they're going to have to – be pretty successful throwing the ball if they're going to try to keep the Stratford defense a little bit off balance. And that's one thing Stratford has gotten better as the weeks have gone along and they're peaking right at the right time. So they really have to keep them off balance as the Bulldogs come out now with second down in the pistol look. There is another gear this time running straight up the middle is Derek Wright. He gets to the 40-yard line. He picks up 20 yards and a Bulldog first down. That good job by Derek hitting the hole there right up the middle. Offensive line doing a great job of creating some holes there up front. Is they're quick to get back on the line of scrimmage. But no huddle now sees Derek again, and this time he is wrapped up. And he will be back probably to the line of scrimmage. Not much out of that one. Good job by the defensive lineman there for Stratford. That was number 91, Michael Pruitt for the – Spartan is there as he stepped up and uh, really gave old Derek a little jolt there. A little extra jolt, please. So here we go now. It is second down and 11. They called a loss of one play action pass. That ball is complete inside the 40 yard line, back a little bit of bass, the original line of scrimmage. 
Yeah, they're going to have to run some uh, offensive patterns a little bit deeper than that defensively. A uh, real good job by uh, Stratford there trying to keep that thing under wraps. But now here's Taylor. He rolls to his right, looks, throws, got a receiver down inside the 30, close to the 27-yard line. Looks like Malik Banks Yes, it is with the reception. Yeah, good job. Just as we said that, trying to throw a little bit deeper, and they throw it a little bit deeper and have Malik just enough, about 12 yards on the pickup, just enough for that first down. No huddle offense. Bulldogs going again. This time there's a keeper by Taylor going to the right, left side. He gets inside the 25-yard line, and he picks up some more positive yards for the Bulldogs. Another good positive carry by Tyron there is his zone read, watching that defensive end on the far side over there, and just a good read of pulling the job and getting up in the hole. So now here come the Bulldogs. It'll be second down, and we'll call it six. Here's the formation. Taylor gives it again to the back, running down inside the 20-yard line, and it's close to another Bulldog first down. Yeah, great job. Good job by the line up front. Cole Gagley up there at the right guard. I believe that's Travis Hyatt, the right tackle. Chris York is the center. And I believe we have Isaiah, uh, not Rosales, Juarez doing a good job up front, the left guard. By Taylor. Taylor gets down inside the five for another Bulldog first down, and it is first and goal. Yeah, good hole. Good job by that line. Creating some good holes. So a little premature movement, and that will be the first penalty against the Bulldogs. They're going to have a legal procedure going against them on that call. Here's something to think about, Mike. You're having success moving the ball. And as we've talked before, one of your best defenses is a good offense. Oh, yes. So would you try to slow it down some and, and use more of the clock that you're chewing up good yardage, or do you try to stay with the hurry up? Uh, I don't really think you're keeping them. You're getting them off balance. They're having good success uh, moving the ball, and I don't think it's just because we're getting on the line quickly, but – what are your thoughts there? Well, uh, as Tyron got stopped for a short loss right there, but if, you, if you're if asking me, you, you just run your plays. Uh, they've been running what they run. You just maybe take a little bit longer to snap the ball, even if you go with the no huddle. Um, just you, you don't break what's been proven to work. So right. we get back now. Taylor takes it, rolls to his right. He looks like he's going to just tuck it and run, and he is finally – jolted out of bounds, and he may have stretched that out for a yard gain, and it's going to be second down or third down and yeah. goal to goal, and they're going to say he is at the 14-yard line, 14 lost, and a half. Yeah, he lost another couple yards there. Uh, really a great job by the running back there as he was able to get on the outside edge and block and actually block two, two defensive players. Uh, third and goal from the 14, it's going to be an interesting uh, two plays right here. So now here we go. There's going to be a keeper by Taylor running toward in the 10-yard line. He gets to the middle of the field, and it more than likely is going to bring out Brazan in the kicking unit with seven minutes and 29 seconds here in the first quarter. Good job by the Bulldogs there, just taking care of the football, uh, keeping control of it right there, not trying to get too much. So Bazan is lined up for what be a 27-yard field goal attempt, kicking from left to right, awaiting the snap. He hits the snap. The kick is up, and it is good. And from 27 yards out, Bazan puts the Bulldogs on top of 3-0. Three to zero. Three to nothing, a good drive by the Bulldogs. Naturally, you want to be able to get down there and get a touchdown, but uh, anytime you can get points. Well, they, we've talked about that before. That's right. They did two things, Randy. They, they ate up time. It took almost five minutes from the opening drive, and you get a field goal, and now that's half of your defense right there. Now the defense has to make a statement this first series. Right. They have right. to Absolutely. make a statement this first series. You can't let them go and just have their way 
and run run their course against the Bulldogs right now. So we'll see how they'll do it these last couple of weeks. We don't even know if they're going to still take that Magnolia page out with these onside kicks. Either. What, what, what do you have to lose? That, that could be interesting. I, I don't I don't see that happening two weeks in a row. Uh, just just knowing, you know, just knowing what you know, knowing what I know, uh, I think that, like you say, that was the page taken out of that book. And um, how, I don't how, see how's it. this for an opening drive? Fourteen plays that covered. What happened down here once we got inside the ten? Penalty, penalty. Okay, I, you just killed my thunder. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Bazaar's <laughs> kick is on the way, and it is a high, deep kick. It is retrieved at the nine-yard line. Taken, running straight upside, going, got a wedge on the right side, stumbles a little bit at the 35, still on his feet, running across to the 50, and finally out of bounds. Maybe you should have tried the onside. Would have been the same result. <laughs> Good return by the Spartans as they get all the way back inside Bulldog territory. I don't know if that's... Uh flag that's off sides on the Bulldogs. I'm pretty sure they're going to decline. Yeah, they'll decline that one big time. So we'll see exactly where they'll spot it. It looks like they're going to spot it at the... Are they adding five yards? Explain that. How do you get to play in the yardage? Wow. Well, with that being said, they'll start at the Bulldogs 43-yard line. I thought it was one or the other. Couldn't pick and choose. Very interesting. You have a ruling on that, Mr. Koss? <laughs> so that here's the first play from scrimmage for the Spartans. There's a little swing pass and thrown out of bounds after a first down. That looks like number 15 for the, this tour and Justin for the first down. To get... Uh, just a little hitch wheel route there by the left side of the offense. Quarterback just takes a step back, throws it on that wheel route, and wide open. Really wasn't a defender within 10, 15 yards of him. So now here's the pistol look for the spot just from the 26-yard line. Receiver comes in motion. There's a take and get to the back, swinging to the right side, stumbles a little bit, got to the lane, and he is going to make it into the end zone untouched from 26 yards out running like it was no one's business. That looks like Hakeem Boy, number 26, mm-hmm. for the Spartans. Yeah, Hakeem Boy is one of the uh, – and that young man right there is a junior. Uh, one of the leading rushers in the district for District 19-5A. Uh, very impressive. He's going to be something next year. Well, he's something right now. He sure is. <laughs> so that was he, quick. He's got more of the total package, and you know your Patterson is a good running back from Brenham, but he's only on your only five six hundred fifty pounds. Boyd is a good sized young man, so well he could be an impact player somewhere. He's shown that when you're averaging twenty six yards a touch and a touchdown, two plays for the Spartans, and they get seven at six forty to give them a seven a three lead. I mean, that was quick. I mean, we didn't get a chance to roll the credits up for everything that's going on. Now, I think they're still doing the intro. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Bulldogs will get a chance to start it again. And uh, I guess the positive from that is that the offense is rolling a little bit, so maybe they can finish what they started on this next drive. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they come out right here. I mean, they they definitely have to stay positive and, uh, you know, just come right back and keep your nose to the grind and, and roll out with this offense and keep it going. So it looks like Mr. Wagner will be our deep man. He awaits at the five-yard line, awaiting the kickoff from the Spartans. Who is that we have kicking? Is that Mr. – Hey, would you see an onside kick right here? Nah. Nah. High short kick. The ball is retreated at the 26-yard line, and being stopped at the 30-yard line is where the momentum will be assessed, and it's 636. DeAndre Blackshear doing a good job of getting up under the ball and catching it before it hits the carpet. 
I definitely do like seeing that right there instead of the ball bouncing and being some type of threat. So the Bulldogs will come back out going from left to right. Those who have just joined us is 636 here in the first quarter. Play Mike Prince and Randy Allen from the Tully Stadium in Houston, Texas. Bulldogs coming out ready to go. There is a give to right, it looks like. He gets about three yards on the game. Going back to the one back set on that right there with the zone read, just giving the ball to Derek. If you allow me to be candid right now. Let's be candid. Um, we're, we know we're in the playoffs. Yes, his father. I'm, I'm smiling, man. He just can't see it. I got a face for radio. We're smiling. Um, that got me smiling. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're nowhere in the playoffs. Wouldn't you like to see how Tyron looks and throwing some pass, a little few more passes tonight? Double. Oh, there's movement, and there's going to cause another five against the Bulldogs. That will technically be their second penalty. And this is the part of the Bulldogs right here that you just – Oh, it just really kind of agitates you to see this. I'm going to give you some good news right now since you're going to agitate it. Just got a Twitter alert. Twitter alert. That (laughs) going into the second period, the Prairie View Panthers Lady Soccer team on top of Alabama State 1 0. All right. (laughs) Back to action here. There is a gear to Kadu. And Kadu will get a little. On their game, he may have picked up one on the lost three. So you feel better now? I do. I feel okay. a lot better because I wore my soccer stuff tonight in honor of the Prairie View Lady Panthers playing in the SWAC Conference Tournament. SWAC Conference Tournament. Hopefully they can continue on. Who are you getting your info from? I'll tell you that right after this play. There is go. going to be a play-action pass going up. The slot receiver caught at the 50-yard line. First down. They're going to say he's down on contact. Yeah. Will Wagner. Yeah, great job by Will Wagner and Tyron putting that ball right on the money. If yes, that ball sir. was anywhere else, I believe a defender would have been able to knock that he down. He couldn't have thrown it any better. Right he could, it was like a long-distance handoff. <laughs> Do it so close. There's a give now to go. Oh, Tyron keeps it running to the left side, and he squeezes to the 40-yard line. And it will be some positive game for the Bulldogs at 4:45 here in the first quarter. Play trailing by the score of seven. Going to pick up about two. Tyron on the zone read right there, doing a great job of just leaving that defensive end in his shoes right there. Oh, early movement by Wagner. They win the no huddle offense, and that's going to cost the Bulldogs another five. Right now, the Bulldogs have three penalties for 15 yards, and that has been the neutralizer this early part of the game. Yeah, frustrating. I don't know what uh, – some it must be some noise or something because the whole left side there jump at the same time. So I'm not real sure exactly if, uh, you know, they're hearing something down there or they're just that antsy getting ready to go. I'm going to attribute to that latter state. Okay. Maybe it was just that. So the Bulldogs back out, pistol formation. Play action, Tyron rolling to his right. He looks like he wants to throw. He stops. He has a toss, and that's over everyone's oh, head. Oh, my goodness. Are you serious? Wow, Tyron just got knocked. And I'm not a fan, ladies and gentlemen, from the sideline. 98 just drilled him out of bounds, and the referee just trots over there and doesn't do anything. <laughs> that's why I love him. <laughs> goodness gracious. He knocked him seven yards out of bounds. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He knocked him to the water coolers. That's and amazing. It's amazing. No flag call. Third down. And we'll call it 13, 14 for the Bulldogs. Double pistol look now. Taylor takes it. Play action. He's being rushed. He throws. Oh, my. That would have been enough for a first down. So it's going to bring out the kicking unit. For the Bulldogs, 4-0-1 here remaining in the first quarter play. Disappointing to see on that drive at least, was there two, at least two, two penalties, illegal procedure calls against the Bulldogs. So them, again, being their worst enemy offensively, 
uh, stopping the drive here. We had yeah, two uh, receivers back for the Spartans. Daniel Nieto, the kicker, a nice punt by Nieto. Good placement. I believe that's number 14 for the Spartans. Blake Grooms is going to catch the ball at the 14-yard line of the Spartans. So they'll start their drive from the 14-yard line on the far hash. Moving from right to left. Ball is going to be on the 13-yard line. So we'll see how the Bulldogs now counter with the likes of Mr. Raheem Boyd. And it looks like they have Mr. Michael Milstead at the quarterbacking position for him. Now they're in a triple eye look, and there's a give to the back, to the light side, high stepping through defenders. He's across to the 50. There's one man to beat. He's down into 30, 20, and he is finally brought down out of bounds at the six yard line. And just like that, he had another explosive run by Raheem Boyd. Yeah, what a great had they actually one of the defensive players had him dead to right and dove in there and just caught some air. Great effort by DeAndre Blackshear. He came from the right cornerback side, running all the way across the field and chasing him down. Showing some speed right there. Seventy nine yard rush. Approximately. Two carries for what's that, ninety something yards already? Yes, sir. No, that's two yeah. That's two pairs for over 100. Over 100. And the give is right back to Boyd, and he finishes what he starts. That's from number 13, I believe. That's Ethan Davidson. Ethan Davidson on the touchdown run. Now how big those illegal procedure Huge. penalties look now. Huge. Huge. They can be overcome. All things can be overcome. Blocked. The PAT is blocked. Is scooped up and out of bounds. I believe that's Adam Croy, number 32, from the near side, getting all the way back in there and stretching out full body length to block that extra point for the Bulldogs. Great effort and great individual effort there. Wow. Wow. Well, we just said things can happen, right? They can. So it is 316 in this third quarter, first quarter. I'm trying to get us out of here quick. It's 13, 13 to 3. The Bulldogs are trailing. Mike Prince and Randy Allen live from Tully Stadium. Uh, if you've heard me in and out, Randy, I've been checking with my wife. She's let me know that she is now headed home. She had a flat. That's good. And uh, travel safely, dear. Know that I love you. This is our big weekend coming up. Big weekend. Yes, 24 years 14, of marriage. Four years. Can you say that, Daniel? One year. Oh, man, keep waking up. <laughs> 24 years. Bulldogs was ready to receive this. Ball awaiting is Wagner at the five. The ball bounces and takes a Spartan bounce out of bounds at the back of the end zone. And the Bulldogs will take over at the 20-yard line. Good long kickoff there by the Spartans. They Number 46 there for the Spartans is Gabriel De La Puente. Putting a big foot into that, putting that one into the end zone. Bulldogs will start right in the middle of the field, 25-yard line. Huddled up on the sideline as they'll run straight to the line of scrimmage. They just need to calm down right here. Have a good... Calm down and slow it down. Have a good run, I mean, a, a good series right here. and Just move the ball. Going back to what they did in the first series, which is the double... Double set in the backfield as Jacob Cadu follows Derek Wright right up the middle. He picks up about four yards on net run, and it will be second down. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with taking that? Nothing. 
You move the sticks, move the clock, picked up a solid four yards. So now here is a, a quick pass. That ball's complete on the far side and gets close to the 40 yard line for another Bulldog first down. Quick pass from the outside from Taylor. Yeah, good job. I don't know if that's a, a call deal or if that's something that Tyron sees. Uh, once he gets up there with that cornerback that far off to where he just says, hey, we're going to you know, hitch past you or whatever. They may be seeing that from in the booth next door to us. Uh, but that's a good good job and a good throwing, throwing catch. So the Bulldogs ready to go back to work. There's another gear this time running straight up the middle, spinning close to 45. Oh, man, the pile on is still going. Could not get, could do down. I'm sorry, that was right. Derek Wright with a good carry, another eight yards for him. Good little pickup, offensive line, uh, doing a good job there for him. Bulldogs breaking out of the huddle, two minutes and 22 seconds, remaining in the first quarter, trailing 13 to three. The snap, and there is another run to the left side this time, so I'm trying to bang out for that first down. They have gotten close to the sticks, but not quite for the first down. You know, that third and short, Harris could do. Takes that ball right up the middle again, just pounding that ball forward. Actually, I kind of like that top of football. You yes, sir. Pound them in a cloud. Especially this time of year. Absolutely. You know, you know, and, and I, I don't mind doing this. And you got the guys; they can they can bang and every now and then throw a little play action in there. And make it work. Bulldogs coming out of the huddle, third down and about a one yard, double pistol look. There's going to be a keeper by Taylor. He stops trying to get to the outside, and he's oh. not going to get it. He is not going to get it as he is pushed back, denied, if you will. And he actually lost a yard. Very interesting. This interesting. will send out the punt team. Interesting the fact that you need a yard, you line up in a pistol formation, you're seven yards back, got to run to get a yard, you're losing penetration and everything else. But I'm in the booth, and I'm going to stay in the booth. Amen. <laughs> the snap is on the way to punt. He is a low knuckler waved away, and that's not the best punt we've seen from yet, though. But he does get it across. If he gets it down to about the 27-yard line of the Spartans, so far the Spartans have run four plays, scored two touchdowns, and covered over 100 yards. So hopefully we can see the uh, Bulldogs play a little defense here, put a little something together, try a little possibly make a little something happen, get a strip, get an interception. Get a, you got to catch it to get a strip. Make something happen. <laughs> That boy's a stud. He, hey, he's a young man. He's a young man. There's a gear to the boy. Kick it to the left wow. side. And, boy, just like that, he's got a block. He kicks it out. He's at the 50 and out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Finally chased down out of bounds. That was not – that was actually – Ethan that Davis. Was Ethan Davis. And – just like that, 36 yards, and the damage continues. Not good for the Bulldogs right now. So the Bulldogs will get on defense. It's 37-yard line. Under center now is Milstead, and there is a stop to play. Timeout is taken by the Spartans. 37 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. Bulldogs are trailing by the score of 13 to 0. 13 to 0. The Bulldogs are losing. We're here at Tully Stadium as the Bulldogs are trying to salvage their three game losing streak. We'll give you some scores of what's going on. Out Waller County and abroad, as games have gotten on the way thus far tonight. Navasota 
all over Washington by the score of 21-0. Washington. Washington is somewhere they don't need to be where Navasota is. <laughs> Lose a 21 nothing. We'll give you some more scores after this. Coming out of timeout on the spot. There's a quick pass over it. Swing pass and almost an outstanding tackle by Ray. But the defense, offensive player was able to shake him off. Picks up some positive yards. Spartans taking advantage of what they're giving right there. They're just kind of picking apart the defense here. You would just say they're making some really good calls, throwing when they need to throw, running when they need to run. Looks like they have a pretty good little offensive game plan put together so far as we come to the close of the first quarter. Okay, as that will take us to the end of the first quarter, Bulldogs are trailing the Spartans by the score of 13-3. to And Randy, let the folks know how we got here. Who brought us here tonight? Well, we're going to give you a few more details this time. We have Galileo's Mexican Grill in Patterson. Their number, if you would like to call them for some carryout, is 979-865-1906. The Learning Tree Daycare Center is in Hempstead, Texas. You need to drop your child off. I'm sure they're quite full right now, but I'm sure you can get on the waiting list. Yes, yeah, always wrong. Their always number wrong. is 979-826-4703. We have Green Lawn Care by James Mitchie. Providing quality service, but a quality value. His number is 979-277-2145. All right. You got that one right in time, man. We're getting ready to start this first quarter. Second quarter off. All is at the 34-yard line of the Bulldogs. They have flip sides. There's a give to the back, swinging to the left side, high stepping, and finally out of bounds. Now, that time, that was Raheem Boyd, and they run. He and Ethan run similar styles. Yeah, good job there, and they really created some pretty good stuff right there. Bradley Zico was able to get all the way to the sideline, hit him right as he was going out of bounds, and he's a little shaken up on the play, but he stays on the sideline for this particular yeah, play. Yeah, he, he just kind of like hung out there, didn't he? Sure did. Well, coming out now, they got this double pistol look. There is. A give to the back, swing it, and dancing. Whoa, kind of slid through the defenders that time was Davison. Looked like a little Houdini act right there sliding yeah. through the defenders. Good job by defensive end or Isaiah Lassard there on the left end. He kind of closed that hole up and <laughs> made the running back kind of change his mind about where he wanted to See, go. I think I'll go this route. <laughs> <laughs> So the Spartans coming out. The ball's at the 25-yard line. It is a first down. Dan comes in motion. Goes back. And rolling. There's a delayed draw, and that ball was given to the back boy. He was not going anywhere on that one. Yeah, tried to run a little counter play right there as he kind of runs out to his right, and then he stops and comes back the opposite direction. A good job by the Defensive line there and middle linebacker Bradley Zick. They get a stop right there for no gain. I like those no gainers. It helps your stats a lot. I like losses better though, and not for us, but you know. exactly. I knew I knew exactly. Ten forty three before the half. Pistol look now for Milstad. He takes it and takes the handoff. He runs. Now, as he tucks it down, whoa, big collision at the 20-yard line. He just lowered his head and said, come get it. That was a kind of defender kind of came in there a little. Half hard. Yeah, yeah. That quarterback dropped his head and lowered the boom. I don't he turned think. into a fullback real quick. Yeah, I think he kind of won that battle. Couldn't really tell who the defender was there. Nieto looked like was the one that got that greeting. Yeah, couldn't tell if that was him or maybe old Weston. Well, here it is now, third down and about two for the Spartan. A full house in the backfield. There's a give and it's kicking to the outside, spinning off the defender. Touchdown for the Spartans from 13 yards out. 
a good strong run by Mr. Boyd there for the Spartans as he's able to break that tackle there and get into the end zone. Rakeem Boyd, a good-looking, powerful running back for the Spartans. Well, we right were told, now, the Bulldogs have no answer for him. Well, we were told if we were impressed with Patterson, we would love Boyd. So and far, I believe he's right. So at the 9.50 mark, it is now 20 to 3. The Spartans on top of the Bulldogs. Well, Randy? Well, I was going to say, I would like to see the Bulldogs come back out with that offensive uh, two-back set and uh, just kind of drive the ball down the field. I think they've got the capability. I think sometimes they get in a hurry. They try to do things too fast instead of using the benefit of the clock with that big offense, just picking up a little bit of yards at a time, pounding them with the ball. Give, give Obviously, it. my philosophy and their philosophy is a little bit different. Why you got the mic, they got the clipboard. There you go. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm happy with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm ha- I've enjoyed you, man. I really have. That's it's glad been, to hear that. It's been a wonderful time. Uh, Magnolia West is on top of Magnolia by the score of 7-0. Tom Ball Memorial is up 21-7. to These are games in the first quarter of play. And we have Brenham all over Springwood right now by the score of 21-0. to We get ready here. Our score is 20-3. to Spartans on top. The kick is on the way. Deep kick retrieved at the 11 yard line, and Wagner dances his way close to the 25, where the Bulldogs will take over. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. It comes that Bulldog offense preparing the huddle on the sideline, getting ready to bring it out see what's going to happen. This is going to be some good stuff right here. Man. It's going to be some good stuff, like you say, Randy. Meanwhile, we'll get another quick score. Seeley on top of Wheatley by a score of 6-0. to zero. Wharton and Sweeney have no score yet in the second quarter. We're back to action here. Taylor looks. He throws. That pass is complete across the 32-yard line to the wide receiver on the far side. I like seeing that little quick pass right there. That is probably the safest and most effective play in high school, period, because sure. these guys do not play man-to-man, bump and run a lot, and that's, that that play is open 85% of the time. Absolutely. And probably. Tyron can throw that ball that's pretty what said effectively. The, that's what I said. you got to have somebody that can throw it. Tyron rolls out to his left. Look, got a wide-open receiver. What a catch and down for the first down. Great grab that time by William Wagner for a Bulldog first down. Yeah, great rollout coming to Tyron's left there, so he kind of was throwing it back against his body, but he threw a laser beam right there, and right on the money as Will Wagner reaches up and pulls that ball down for a good first down and a good pickup there as they get into Spartan territory at the 48-yard line. 48-yard line, Bulldogs going from right to left. Pistol formation. There's going to be a give to right, right into the right side. He picks up about three, and it will be second and seven for the Bulldogs as Kadu comes in with the play. Yeah, it looks like the Derek's not quite hitting that that spot exactly where the play is intended. He's kind of cutting it back. Uh, it's kind of taking a little chewing right here. So they run Jacob Kadu in there. So now the Bulldogs come back out, three receivers. Taylor takes it, rolls to his left, wants to throw. Got pressure coming, son, and he's sacked. Yeah, Spartan's doing a really good job downfield covering the receivers. Tyron was going to try to cut that back, but had the defensive player following him there, and so he loses about seven yards, eight yards on that particular play. It's going to be about third and 13 for the Bulldogs as the ball moves all the way back to Bulldog 49-yard line. It's going to be interesting to see the kind of play here. As Tyron Taylor's in shotgun formation with Kadu to his right. Fake 
fakes and he rolls. He got plenty of time to right throw, trying to get direct little traffic there, and finally ends up throwing the ball out of bounds on the far sideline. The Bulldogs will now face four and fourth and a thirteen, and will bring the punting unit back out on the field. So the Bulldogs, they get five plays in thus far with 7.58 remaining. Fourth down and about 13. That sack was a killer for that drive. Yeah, it really was. Snap is on the way. The kick, another low line drive kick, and it is picked up at the 18-yard line and finally smashed at the 20. Good coverage by the Bulldogs. They get downfield. Nieto just kicking a little low liner there. Uh, although it's not doesn't look like a great kick, it was very effective uh, to keep the Spartans, uh, you know, at least down inside the 20 yard line. There, so they're going to mark that ball right on the 20 yard line. Yeah, that's a that's a a big drive right now. But with the way these Spartans are running. It doesn't even matter where you put the ball at, man. We got to find a way to put put some of this to rest with these guys. Two receivers to the left got the apex going. But... That's boy kicking to the outside again, and he's got one uh, blocker and a convoy, and it looks like he's going to run 80 yards for the touchdown. Here's a flag. We may be saved by a flag. Wow. Is going to be holding against the Spartan. Wow. This kid is awesome, man. You know, he is a good looking athlete, but I tell you what, something also, an offensive line is doing a great job uh, against the Waller defense, just on getting, getting men on their blocks. Staying with him because uh, on the couple of runs he's only had to make about one or so move before he hit the full stride and he's gone. And he he, he seems so effortless when he's running, and he's not. And he does look smooth. I will say, look like me out there, but I didn't want to disgrace the kid. <laughs> well, no, you don't want to put that kind of pressure on a young man. <laughs> not, so not the at this age. Penalty is going to set him back. To the th- Hold on. They started at the 20. If it was a – oh, a spot foul. That's spot right. Okay. Spot. So now going Milstead goes up. Oh, he had two receivers open, and he missed them. He split them, thank goodness. Wow. Two receivers running right at the free safety in the middle of the field, and not real sure what was going on there. But Fortunately for the Bulldogs, it was overthrown the short guy and underthrown the long guy. For an incomplete pass, as the Spartans will start back to the 31-yard line. Quarterback under center. Number six, man comes in motion. Going to go hand the ball back to Raheem Boyd. Boyd waits for a hole to open and then cuts it back to the left. He leaps over a defender. Now just runs out of bounds at the 50-yard line. I believe the can't tell who that is. Is that DeAndre or if that's Cameron? I believe that's DeAndre. He thought he was going to go in there and make a tackle on the play and went to cut his legs out of him. And Hakeem showing his athleticism just bounced right over the top of him. <laughs> he looked like he was taking a swan dive in the swimming pool. I just got a text. <laughs> so. <laughs> I tell you after this play. <laughs> we have a student bus yeah. tonight. Oh my! It's a, a drove of people just showed up for the Bulldogs. As there's a swing pass out to the receiver, he's spinning defenders. He gets close to another Spartan first down. I mean, just a couple of yards short as he gets to the 42 yard line. They have to get almost. Well, they have to <laughs> just get to the 40. I just got a text, and they. <laughs> And they 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 asked me to promise not to say their name, cause, but they say we need to count to make sure we got eleven guys out there. <laughs> oh wow! 
This guy's that good. He's that good, though, man. As he's back about eight yards deep, his boy, he gets the handoff running to the right side, and he's running downhill, and I do mean downhill, and they're trying to struggle, and finally gets down to the five-yard line, another 30-plus yard gain on that run. One thing's for sure is that you are not going to just be able to reach out and grab a hold of that guy's shirt and pull him down. He's wow. He's a very strong runner. Now, I'm all for the – y'all know we're Bulldog supporters, but this is a, a treat to watch this kid run tonight. And to watch how his line is working for him. I didn't uh, know – I thought we had seen some of the better backs, but this this guy yeah, this just the first right half. taking the cake right here. Boy gets the handoff again to the left side, and he just bowls right in for another Spartan touchdown from seven yards out. Wow. Talking to one of the coaches earlier saying that this is uh, probably one of the best offensive and defensive lines they're going to see this whole year. Talking about the Spartan uh, big men up front. And, uh, Obviously, obviously, by the looks of it so far, you'd have to agree with him. The snap is up, and the kick is good. And at 625, the Spartans are now up by the score of 27 to 3. All right, Coach, let's, let's, let's think forward. Let's think positive right now. Okay. You're Coach Wright. Wait you know you're going to play next week. What do you do at this stage of the game as far as your personnel is concerned? Well, you really don't have many options offensively. As uh, as good as the Bulldogs are at times, they're really pretty thin. Okay. And uh, if you you want to take the score into account, then uh, you're going to be looking at a – a uh, a similar Waller Springwoods outcome as far as scores concerned. Don't tell and, me that. One. And Waller would be on the Springwood side instead of the instead of the Waller side. So um, well, so, so so being that you're thin, being that you're thin, do you you don't throw in the towel more or less, but do you start strategically trying to put some guys well, in to give them that experience? Plus, a little re- bit of reserve. that. I think what you what what. What I would do was I'd try to be, start working on some things that I'm going to try to do next that's, week. That's what then, I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, if you're going to have to throw more next week, I think I'd set up Tyron to you know, try to throw the ball more, uh, you know, try to try to run some things that you know that you're going to be effective with next week. And, you know, just try to try to get your offense accustomed to some of that type of movement. So, so – Kickoff goes all the way back. Will Wagner uh, receives the ball and gets the ball out to the 28-yard line of the Bulldogs. So the Bulldogs will start from the 28 on the far hash mark. They're moving from our right to left from the north end of the field to the south. Tyron Taylor comes out. He'll be in shotgun formation with Derek Wright to his right. Run right up the field is number 91, Kale Pruitt, for the Spartans making the tackle. He's going to gain about two yards. The Bulldogs get back and huddle uh, back. As they prepare to run this next play, so you got 5.49 before the half, three receivers to the left for Taylor. He rolls to his left, looks, throws into the slot, and the pass was complete to Wagner. And That's one of the things I think I'd do too, Mike, I'd try to find different ways to get the ball in Will Wagner's hands. He, he, is, your, he is your creator, uh, especially if he gets a little open field in front of him. You make him a primary target, then they're going to – they're going to sink in on that to where later in the game you're going to have opportunities to throw to some of your other offensive Such teams. as a Nieto, Banks, or someone like that. Exactly. So it's third down and about four right now. Taylor looks again, throws, and what a catch for the first down 
By Nieto. Yeah, Daniel Nieto, good job. Tyron, you know, when he's on, he really throws a good ball. And he really made a, a good choice right there and put the ball right on Daniel Nieto and made a good job going up and catching that ball and bringing it down. So the ball's at the 44-yard line of the Bulldogs. Three receivers to the right side now for Taylor. Takes it, gives it to right. Right runs, and he buries his head to the 46-yard line of the Bulldogs. He picks up a couple yards on that one. I'm not sure if um, we're running away from that cat and he's running everything down or if he's that good and getting off the clock. You're going to put your eyeballs on him, man, and study one good eye on him and watch him next couple of plays and really see. Uh, one thing I've noticed this particular possession is that the Bulldogs are huddling and possibly trying to slow Take, it, Taking the time. Slow and, it and down. So now we have the spread look now for Taylor. Uh, it looks like a reverse to Wagner. Look Wagner there. gets it wide open. Good block downfield. Shaking and baking. Gets across the 40-yard line to the 38. And just as you said, Coach, finding ways to get it in Wagner's oh, hand, and he understand. gets a bulldog first down. They've been working on that play for about two years now, and I think that's the first <laughs> time I've seen them run. Is that right? <laughs> that was a dipsy doodle. Hmm. So first down for the Bulldogs, three minutes and 50 seconds before halftime. This is exactly what the Bulldogs feed right here. Doing a good job just taking their time, running the plays. And there's a rollout. Oh, oh, tried to get the receiver, Malik Banks. He dove for it at the 21-yard line. Taking a big hit was Taylor. And that will be second down. Now, here's here's what I want to ask you, Coach. Are you not asking Taylor to do a little bit more, having him roll to his left and then throw back or throw against his body, Ben, that he's a right-handed thrower? No, I don't think you are. It's, you know, when you play that position, you work on that stuff. And, uh, you know, people try to make it sound a lot harder than it is. And I think you know as well as I do that, um, you know, it, it can be done. It can be done effectively. And so, no, as far as that's concerned, I mean, you, you practice that. You do it in practice all the time. So he's an athlete. He is an athlete. And speaking of, Kadu just gets a big run. For about four and a half yards, we're going to give him five since we're the home team. As he hits yeah. close to the Bulldog first down, three minutes and he nineteen his seconds. Helmet more than anybody I've seen, I believe. He adjusts his helmet. Cole he Gogley lost his helmet again. As big as his head is, I'm telling you, I don't. Know. <laughs> I'm not sure how that happened. Oh, there's a pass, almost intercepted, but it was incomplete. Yeah, I actually had the inside receiver just breaking between the linebackers there. And uh, just, uh, I don't know if he was, you know, obviously supposed to throw to the outside guy or not, but he would have picked the inside receiver there and he would have hit him right between the gaps. He may have been able to run to the last line on the field. Well, it's fourth down and six. The Bulldogs are going for it from the 35-yard line of the spot. Taylor takes, he looks, he wants to throw going up. That's too oh, strong. Might be a flag. We've got to have a flag on that. No flag called as the slot receiver. Three, and they're going to say the ball was overthrown. So a turnover of downs with two minutes and 57 seconds. You know, when you're only playing with 10 guys on the field, and then you have five other guys out there, He's playing against 16 guys. <laughs> the odds are really not in our favor. They're not in your favor, boss. Unbelievable. So the yeah, score Tyron gets racked over here on the sideline and can't even get a roughing. Yes, sir. So now there's a give back to Boyd, I believe. He gets up to the 40-yard line. He picks up. Davidson, right. That was Davidson? I think so. The slashing and dashing of Boyd and Davison. What a combination. Yes, it is. An effective combination it has been thus far. They're going to give them four yards on that game. It's been predicted that uh, these Spartans here are going to make a pretty good run in the playoffs. Well, they're looking pretty impressive right now. 
as Milstead is in the pistol formation. He takes the snap and quarterback draw. He runs across close to the 50-yard line as he will get enough for another spot in first down. It looks like they're going to try to get some more in close before the half. Yeah, I don't believe they're going to hold back. And they're going to... This Hooper, that number... Number six, and they just brought Hooper in at quarterback. So now there's a gear to the back, deep in the backfield. He gets across the 50 to the 46 yard line of the Bulldogs with 149 remaining here in the first. Yeah, it's coming right at him, going right back to the line of scrimmage. They're going to try to get some more. There's a pump fake, and the defender falls down off the pump fake. And the pass is complete to the 36-yard line for another Spartan first down. Back back to the line of scrimmage, Spartans. No huddle offense right now. Clock picks back up at 135. Hooper is running around. Gene Chase, he makes a defender miss. He's at the 25, slices inside to the 20, down to the 18-yard line, scrambles. They are going to have the holding call, though. Defensive end on the far side. They were trying to get loose, but offensive tackle wouldn't just quite let go of his shirt. But if they hold, can they take off about 30 seconds on the clock? I wish they would. Wow. 124 remaining before the half. Spartans on top 27 to 3 will give you some scores around. Waller County and uh, District 19, and we get to halftime as Hopper is, Hooper gets around the defense. Looked like he would have been sacked, but he scrambles yet again for another positive game for the Spartans as it is 106 now in timeout taken by the Spartans. The ball is going to be at the 39-yard line of the Bulldogs when we resume. What, what what's going on right now, Coach? Yeah, Bulldogs are having a great opportunity to make some plays there and just coming up empty-handed on making some tackles, not being sure-handed, and, uh, just breaking down and making some, you know, making a good fundamental play there. And, uh, not to take anything away from them. They're breaking tackles and, and getting that extra yardage that they need. Said so doing what's got to be done. The Bulldogs breaking from the sideline. Try and get could be pretty big if they can hold them here to not get anything. You know, it might get them a little bit of momentum going into the half there where they can come out and maybe have a good stand in the second half. They're going to, as far as we'll start out with the ball, but I'd like to see him try to hold them here. So Hopper takes it. He takes a flat to the, hits a receiver in the flat. I'm sorry. And that ball was complete to number 23. That was Mr. They have about third and a long six for the Spartans. Is there in shotgun formation? Dylan Schroeder being. Oh, that's a fumble. Again. The ball's fumbled, knocked loose from the quarterback, scramble for the ball. I can't tell who's going to come up with the ball. Officials are not going in. The wall, the Bulldogs have the ball. There you go, baby. So a great play there. I couldn't tell. I don't know if that was Dylan Schroeder or somebody on the far side. If he was just going to throw the ball, getting their hand on his arm, knocking the ball loose. So with 33 seconds remaining at the half, Bulldogs recover the ball at the... 38 yard at their 38 yard line. We'll see what happens here, coach. We're going to go up top right here. We're going to get something to Wagner. I'd run post to post, out and up. Taylor rolls to his left. He get out, get out of bounds, and make it trying to make the fit. Not very is. Got to know that you've got to get out of bounds on that. We have three timeouts, so it's. You know, you got, you got, might as well use them. You're giving them. Yeah, them. yeah, you might as well don't take them to the half, which you burn them all up. That's something I didn't understand a while ago when Spartans were hurrying up. They have timeouts left as well that they didn't take. 
to see what's going on here as they do take a time out. I'll remind we will have some scores and highlights coming up for you here in a little while. And as Randy brought to our attention earlier, the Falcons at Royal with a win tonight could actually make the playoffs with a one and nine record. That is very, very interesting concept. Um, wow. Yeah, that, playing for that last spot. Playing for the last and final spot. How about we just let the best two go and leave everybody else home? But <laughs> I would be for that. <laughs> 22 seconds left. Three receivers to the right side for Taylor. He takes it. He rolls to his right. He's looking. He plants, throws over the head of everybody. Yeah, playing a little play right there. They try to get a lot of verticals going and then try to get Will Wagner on about a 20-yard out pattern. How about just a drag? So well, did did everybody it. spread everybody out? Because just run a little drag because they're going to go with a majority. These are still 17, 18-year-olds. Kind of play on their aggression. 15 seconds remaining. Right. 27 to 3 is the score. Bulldogs have a third down and four. Do we need to get a first down? to at least secure that. As Taylor looks, he throws in the flat over the head of the intended receiver. That looks like that. Evan Herzog. Herzog. And now we got fourth down. Yeah, I tried and to just kind of rush the pass a little bit there and uh, trying to hit Evan on a out pattern. Don't know if the tight end was supposed to be coming across there and underneath everything or not, but I was unable to complete the pass. Daniel Nieto comes out for the punting team. So Nieto, they have no one back for the spot because there's a high snap. He gets it off, and the kick is a low line drive. Just let the clock run, fellas. Let the clock. Get Don't away. touch let it. The let the run clock out. run out. And that's what it does as we have come to the end of a total dominant first half by the Spartans. 27 to 3 is our score right now. And, Randy, what have you seen thus far? Well, I believe you said it earlier at the beginning as we started that uh, the Bulldogs are their own worst enemy there. They got down and got in good position on their first drive. They were inside the 10-yard line and then had a penalty and hurt themselves and were able to overcome it. And uh, then later on, a a drive or two later, uh, basically the same type thing to where in that situation, you have those illegal procedure calls where you're just trying to rush things. And, and, you know, you end up just kind of hurting yourself instead of of improving your situation. And I don't know. I just – I'm not a – Big thing, you know, when your defense is, you know, they, their main focus is not the, the defense. Their main focus is offense. So, if, you know, if you're going to use that as your as your focal point, that means that your your defense is going to be weaker than your offense. Well, you know, you think that you would want to keep your offense on the field as much as possible, and so you would not want to be in a hurry up situation. But you know, I guess the total opposite of my thinking of you know what they're what they're talking about. So, you know, it just uh, kind of uh, basically backfires on you. Yeah, that one kind of backfired. We'll give you a recap of how we got our halftime score. Bulldogs strike pay their first with a 27-yard field goal by Bazan with 7:03 in the first possession that the Bulldogs had. They actually drove 14 plays covering. With the field goal that started from their 26 yard line, eight or five minutes, and it seemed like things were to a good point. Then the explosive run of 26 yards by number 26, Mr. Raheem Boyd, gave the Spartans the seven to three lead at 6:40, and they never looked back. Another seven yard touchdown run by his counterpart, Mr. Ethan Davison, at the 3:16 mark, and they had a 13 yard touchdown run by Boyd in the second quarter at 9.50 to make it 20-3. to three. Then another explosive run by Boyd as he get a seven-yard touchdown run with 6.25 in the second quarter, and that's where we are at halftime. The Spartans 
on top by the score of 27 to 3. We're going to give you a few scores going on around at halftime. The Brenham Cubs are all over Springwood by the score of 35 to 7. Here's another halftime score for you. Navasota 56, Washington 0. Woo! How about those Rattlers? <laughs> How about them? Uh, Sealy's on top of Wheatley by the score of 12 to 0. And they're at 835 of the second quarter. Magnolia West 14 and Magnolia 7. They are in the second quarter. Tumball Memorial 35, Tumball 7. They are at halftime. Sweeney is losing to Wharton, 19-0. to zero. Uh, Let's see here. Burleson on top of Everman, 14-7 to seven into the second quarter. Somerville, in a long, long half-length season, they are t- losing 22-0 to Burton. And Columbus is on top of Royal by the score of 8-0 to zero in the first quarter play. Hempstead. Down at Cowboy Stadium against Aetna. They are winning by the score of 6-3. They are in the second okay. quarter. And Brazzers Sport is on top of Stafford by the score of 7-0 in the second quarter. Hitchcock, another game that the Bobcats will be watching, on top of Industrial by the score of 14-0. to That is our halftime to do as we have it set up here, the Bulldogs trailing by the score of 27 to 3. We are going to take us a break. And we'll come back. We'll go ahead. Sorry about that. We'll be back with the second half of the Bulldogs in just a moment. Keep it locked where you got it, and we'll be right back. We're listening to the Open Mic Broadcast Network, the voice of Walla County Athletics. We're taking a break from our live coverage right now, but we'll return shortly. Follow us on Twitter at OBN underscore radio. Like our Facebook page at Open Mic Broadcast Network. Serving the community through faith and athletics, the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Don't forget your phone call away from listening to Walla County Sports live from anywhere throughout the country on your cell phone or your landline. That number is 724-444-7444. To listen to the Royal Falcons, the code would be 134-280. For the Walla Bulldogs and the Prairie View Adam University Panthers, that code would be 46493. For the Hempstead Bobcats, that code would be 135 zero three six remember that number is seven two four 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 seven four 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 or you can always visit our website at ktorradio.com and listen online one county one voice the open mic broadcast network we'd like to thank our sponsors and supporters for tonight's broadcast the City of Prairie View, 4B Economic Group, the Temple of Refuge Ministries, the Walla Bulldog Club, San Bernardo Electric Corporation, the Learning Tree Daycare Center, Larry's Automotive, Galileo's Mexican Grill. You would like to be a sponsor or supporter, simply call us at 832-213-8824. Serving the community through faith and athletics, the Open Mind Broadcast Network. Another proud supporter for the Walla Bulldogs is Green Lawn Care Service, providing commercial and residential lawn maintenance for quality, service, and value. Contact Green Lawn Care Service at 979-277-2145. Has your vehicle been giving you the blues? Contact our good friends at Larry's Automotive at 30540 FM 1488 in the field store area. Now 936-931-556. Showing support for Walla County student athletes and helping educate today's children, the Learning Tree Child Care Center. Located at 837 12th Street, Hempstead, Texas. Contact the owner, Carla Perry, at 979-826-4703. Another proud supporter for Walla Bulldog Athletics is Sam Bernard Electric Cooperative. From Hallisville to Magnolia, from Patterson to Ellinger, and all communities in between, Sam Bernard Electric Cooperative has been providing safe, 
and reliable electricity to this area for nearly 75 years. Sam Bernard wishes all the area athletes and their coaches a very successful season. For more information on Sam Bernard Electric Cooperative, please visit their website at www.sbec.org. Another proud supporter for Waller County Athletics is the Varsity Grill. Located at 31315 and 2920 in Waller, Texas. The Varsity Grill has a variety of foods to choose from. Italian cuisine, Texas traditional, poor boys, burgers, seafood, and fried plate platters. For more information, I want to give Diana and Teresa a call at 936-372-9115. The Varsity Grill, serving Waller County. Don't forget, you can listen to the Sports Report Mondays and Fridays for the Open Mic Broadcast Network. All the latest and the greatest going on throughout Waller County, the Sports Report is your place. The Sports Report right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network, serving the community through faith and athletics. And welcome back. We are here at Tully Stadium where we're at halftime right now. The Waller Bulldogs are trailing the Stafford, Stratford, I'm sorry, Spartans by the score of 27 to 3. We have been joined by Brian Abanez. He is one of the coaches, wrestling coach, if I'm not mistaken, and involved with some of the things going on in Bulldog country. We're going to allow him to further break bread with us, Mr. Randy is getting ready to partake in it, but you have to promise that he won't beat us up, man, before he leaves here. You got that? He won't He won't do it to us. We'll now turn over to hear from uh, Mr. Randy Allen and Mr. Abanez. Coach Abanez, I just want to thank you for coming up this evening and joining us. Uh, uh, just kind of introduce yourself. Tell us how long you've been in Waller, and uh, let us get to know you a little bit. Randy, thanks for uh, having me on here, uh, enjoying the good football weather. Uh, my name is Brian. Uh, Brian has been the wrestling coach for uh, the weather out here. It's nice and cool. Yeah, Texas. Well, that's a good way to look at it, that's for sure. It is about the weather. That's fine and dandy. Uh, we've been in water now for seven years. This will be your eighth year. Uh, I know the last few years you've taken some uh, athletes to the State Wrestling Tournament. Tell us a little bit about your program, kind of what your uh, what your mission statement is there a little bit, and just kind of share us, share with us a little bit about your wrestling program. Well, Brian, I'll tell you what, uh, wrestling in Texas uh, is now starting to be big. Um, I believe uh, maybe about 20 years ago, um, and wrestling's a sport that's uh, a lot bigger in the Midwest. Uh, you have a lot of people, uh, coaches, that, uh, they're all from uh, different, uh, you know, Michigan, Indiana. Actually, uh, quite a few from Oklahoma, where I'm from. And, uh, but here in Greece, in the last 15 years, Texas has started to catch up with the state as far as putting uh, high school rest of college, uh, college uh, programs. And uh, here in the last, like, four years, uh, we've started to uh, build Waller up into one of the better uh, programs. And we've taken uh, our third year uh, going to uh, state. Um, we've had, uh, you know, Waller's had a tradition of girls wrestling before I came. So uh, we're really good. Uh, legacy and we've had uh, actually uh, three uh, I'm sorry I think four girls uh, qualified for state by two as uh, alternate as, uh, as uh, wrestlers the program's picked up a lot we had a, a young man that uh, also qualified last year and then we uh, that we had different uh, qualified uh, we got uh, we get contacted regularly with college coaches learning about a wrestler as a matter of fact the state tournament last year we had a young lady offered on the spot a full ride to wrestle at a college. Things are picking up. And we look to have a strong team. Yeah, that's awesome. It's awesome when you have those opportunities. You, you give those kids that kind of look and the, the opportunities that's given there. Uh, what type of uh, program do you kind of initiate with your kids? Um, I know from uh, being a wrestling parent that uh, some of the uh, workouts are, are pretty hard, so just kind of demand-wise, what what are you looking at when you when you have working kids out? Well, the first thing, uh, Randy, is we have to indoctrinate the kids into uh, wrestling, a lot of wrestling mentality. It's a lot of different sports, uh, you know. And other again, going back to what I was saying about uh, being in other states, uh, it's like Texas. Uh, you go to a football game like this, 
you have several generations of parents, grandparents, and they're yelling out things, and they know what's going on and stuff like that. And up north, it's like that with wrestling. So uh, it's kind of uh, getting that, uh, you know, getting the kids uh, set uh, into that kind of, or uh, programmed to that kind of a mindset. Uh, wrestling is one of the most, uh, as far as uh, it's physically demanding sports that, uh, that there is. And uh, the thing about wrestling is uh, a lot different than football, the way you train yourself. Football, you train uh, to be explosive in one play, and then you get like a, a 20 to 30 second rest, and you got to go do it again, you got to go do it again. Uh, wrestling is six minutes on top. And the conditioning for that is uh, you have to be able to go the entire six minutes nonstop. Uh, I would equate it to uh, running a full sprint for six minutes by your parents. And uh, we got to prepare the kids to do that. So, uh, the workout themselves is grueling. Uh, during uh, the preseason, just to be an example, we have uh, the kids doing anywhere from uh, five push-ups a day, top of weightlifting, all the cardio and running. And this is all done in a period of about uh, 45 to 50 minutes. It moves very quickly, and it's, uh, it's difficult. Kids like it, uh, they're in tip-top shape, so. Yeah, it's definitely a very demanding sport. Uh, one of the good things about it is I think you've built a, a good, strong program, and I know the, you've seen some success. We're very proud of that. Uh, how many kids uh, are you running in your program right now? Right now we have about, uh, Randy, we have about uh, uh, 40 to around 50 kids uh, without the uh, kids come over for football, and that's uh, boys and girls. Uh, Usually we have anywhere from 40 to 60. Try to keep the numbers up and uh, the uh, program uh, strong. And uh, what that does is it uh, allows the older kids uh, to pass on down to the younger kids uh, the mindset, the attitude, the uh, work ethic, and everything that uh, makes a strong program. And basically, uh, you know, after four years of being the head wrestling coach at Waller, uh, the program runs itself. Now we've got a machine, and I foresee us to uh, you know, continuing to be strong. That's a great job. We know you're doing a great job. I know you've got a, a job to do right now. I appreciate you coming up and spending some time with us and sharing a little bit about the wrestling program. And uh wish you luck this year. I know your season's fixing to get started here pretty quick, and uh, we're looking forward to that and excited about that. Thank you again, Coach Abanez, for coming up, and uh appreciate your time. All right, Randy. Well, thanks for having me, and uh, let's help you uh, get this turned around here in the second half. Absolutely. Go Bulldogs. Thank you. You bet. Well, we do like to thank Mr. Abanez for coming in. And uh, being from the St. Louis, uh, Missouri area, I do understand and appreciate the wrestling. When Back when I was in Neanderthal days, we linebackers had to wrestle as a way of keeping yourself free when you were got in the trenches. It, there you go. So it was one of those, uh, one of those, if you were going to do it, you didn't even have an option. If you played linebacker, you were absolutely Going to be in wrestling, we really appreciate that. They had wrestling back then. Yeah, they had wrestling back then, man, and, and no leather caps or anything <laughs> like that. We're gonna need these bulldogs to do some wrestling, man, to get this second half on the way. You got any assessment for us, Randy? Well, I'd like for the bulldogs just to come out and to, and to play a good, solid second half. Not necessarily, you can't say error free, but absolutely would like to see them play a little bit sharper mentally. Uh, from the mental aspect of the game, uh, they're they're just uh, I believe a little bit more. I don't know how do you say athleted. It's not athleted. How do you what, what is the proper word for that? Oh, well, uh, they are they are outskilled. Outskilled. Oh yeah, yeah. Or overmanned. Man man, overmanned. They're a little bit more outskilled by the strap for the squad, uh, but you know definitely you can take from that and go out there and, and play at a good mental level. And welcome back as we get ready to start this second half of football off. The Spartans will be receiving the kick. And you know what, Randy? Talk to me. What else I got to lose? I'm onside. <laughs> right? I hear you. But do you agree with me? I agree with you. No, you don't, because you would have said something. No, I agree with you. Look at him backing up. <laughs> Look at him backing up. One, two, you got six on this side right here. You got one, two guys right here, onside it, right here. And the kick is a high, short kick, and we're treated to the 31-yard line by the up back. Gets across to the 41-yard line. Give up seven yards, huh? Yep. Seven yards. Get her done, baby. Get her done. It. Getting excited here as we get ready to start this second half off. Randy, real quickly, let the folk know 
who are helping us out tonight. Who's helping us out tonight? <laughs> tonight in Hempstead, Texas, we have the Hempstead Theater, newly remodeled, showing the current shows. You need to get there. They have showings Friday, Saturday, and Sunday afternoon. Hey. Prosperity Bank in Waller, Texas with Royce Rape. We have a defensive stand here. Stratford trying to get something going, giving the block to Raheem Boyd as he's met right at the line of scrimmage. He's going to be stopped for no gain by the defensive line of the Waller Bulldogs. Bradley Zeke can call the defensive plays. Stratford in huddle. The quarterback is number seven. That's Milstead. Michael Milstead said he had a torn rotator cuff, and he's been limited play. Good receiving tackle there by number 42, Dietrich Gardner. Picked up three yards. Going to leave third and seven for the Spartans. The Bulldogs with a good opportunity here to get a stop defensively, something that they could do early to start the second half. Spartans come to the line of scrimmage. Milstead will be in the shotgun formation. Raheem Boyd will be behind him. Drop back pass, throws, passes incomplete, throwing that ball to number 80. Number eight Martin. being Mr. Jonathan or Javante. Jatavian told. J- yeah, Jatavian. Say that three times. Say I it. don't think I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't want to do it. Martin, they come out in punt formation. What are the chances? They run a fake pun here. Uh, long, seven uh, for the, long seven for the Spartans. Bulldogs ready to snap his back and good. A left-footed kicker kicked it down. Colin Sims Davenport receives it, cuts inside, but tackled quickly at about the 29. He's going to reach the 30-yard line. Good job of Sims catching the ball in the air and not letting it bounce as he keeps it from getting deep into Bulldog territory. Bulldogs huddle up on the sideline. They're going to spot that ball right at the 25-yard line, so that's where the Bulldogs will take over with 10-28 in this third quarter play. And Tyron Taylor takes the rose, got that ball completed over there in the slot receiver position, gets up to the 32-yard line for the Bulldogs' uh, first possession of this second half. Yeah, yeah, good job with Tyron on the rollout right there. As he just hit easy receiver on the outside, just picked up about eight yards for the Bulldogs. Good job offense. Ten minutes here in this third quarter play. Three receivers to the left side now for Taylor. Taylor takes it, and he gives it to the back, running across the 40 for the first down. As that will be, was that right on the run? I believe it was. That was Derek, Derek right? right. First down, Bulldogs. That's the Bulldogs getting ready to go. We'll give you some staggering numbers here in a little bit about the performance staggering of Mr. Boyd here. As the Bulldogs now come out. Okay. As Tyron Taylor gets the ball and gets it to Right, right gets across the 40-yard line, and he will pick up a couple of yards on there as they will spot him at about the 43-yard line. Well, actually, the 44-yard line, yeah, 43. 44. Yeah, a little, they were a little generous Derek, on that when it seemed Derek right. was pulled out earlier, and I believe it was basically just because it wasn't uh, running the play as designed, and there again, he had a lead blocker but didn't quite get in behind the blocker. It's going to be interesting to see here. So now Taylor takes it. He rolls to his left, throws, and that ball was intended for Mr. Wagner, Wagner. again, and he's just a little too front, too much in front of him. Yeah, uh, good route there by Will Wagner as he was down uh, probably about 15 yards there, and it was really open 
uh, just the ball a little bit off target there. Rand, I got some more good news for you, man. Well, you got some breakdance moves. Well, right yeah, now. I got I got the tweet and I got the breakdance move. The Lady Panthers were victorious in their match tonight, so the stage is set for the championship on Sunday. I'll That's tell you right after great. this. Tyron Taylor takes it and gives it to right, running to the right side, gets across the 50, first and he down. has a first down. It'll be a down to the 46, and I'll continue to do my breakdance move. Do it. Because not only did he get the first down, but the Lady Panthers will take on the Lady Bison for the SWAT Championship, where the Panthers will get a chance to redeem themselves Amen. at their loss to the Bisons at Prairie View, 1-0. Yes. So the stage is set Late for Sunday. in the game with a controversial call. The very controversial call that Coach K. Abe has not forgotten. Back to action here, rolling to the left is Taylor looking. Looked like he wanted to throw. He finally tosses it out of bounds in the direction of Wagner. It's Bazan. Bazan throws the ball to the ball boy. That was Bazan quarterback? He was receiver. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, I, I know he's standing on the sideline. He's a kicker, but he made a good catch. Okay. We need him to be in between the lines. I don't <laughs> – <laughs> I said, man, don't have my eyes messing with me just then. Tyron doing a good job, though. Yeah, he really the is. Ball. He really uh, is. He's not taking a loss there, though, so, so good to see that. Taylor now gives it to Wright off the read. Wright will get a couple of yards on that going to bring up about third and eight for the Bulldogs. Seven it's minutes. going to be a big play right here in the opening after the Bulldog defense comes out and gets a stop defensively. But, you know, I'm this is almost four down territory. You're on, you're on their side of the ball. What what else you got to lose? You have nothing at all to lose. Nothing down at all 27 to 27 to three. Every possession is a four down possession. Unless you want to give your kicker a little work. I let him work on a PAT. So <laughs> get ready right, going to the left side, banging, and picks up about another three to four yard. It's going to be fourth down and about four oh, right four. now. That's doable if if you're asking me. That's doable. That is much more doable than a fourth and seven or eight. Obviously, it's a shorter distance. It is a shorter distance. Yeah. We can figure that out. The ball, and, and we figured that one out. Forty-one yards. We yard figured line. that out all on our own. Yeah. <laughs> Fourth down and four now. Bulldogs going for a pistol look. Tyron Taylor throws in a slot. That ball's behind the receiver, Wagner, and it's going to be a turnover of downs for the Bulldogs. Yeah, very disappointing right there. Uh, really, the ball not not even even in a catchable space there. I don't know if that was because uh, the defender was there and he was just trying to throw it away from him or exactly what what that was. But definitely want to see that offense stay on the field a little bit longer. Spartans has come on to the field. Number seven will be Milstead. He'll be in shotgun formation with Davidson behind him in the pistol formation. Turns and hands the ball to his left. A great play there. See if we can see who that is. I believe that's Wes Geigley, number eight. Brother Geigley. Getting up in there and making a play for the Bulldogs as he gets a no game. Geigley getting giggity. Good job <laughs> there by the Geigster. We need some more of that type of action right there from that defense. Offensive of the Spartans come up. Milstead will be under center with the fullback and a tailback. Bulldogs jump. There's going to be a flag on the play. They hand the ball up right to the middle. Danny Watto on the tackle there. As Davidson, number 13, carries the ball. It's going to be about a six-yard gain for the Spartans. They would get five with a penalty. We're going to see what the, they're going to mark that off. They're going to take the play. I'm pretty sure they're going to take the play and lose a yard. But yeah, save the down, lose a yard. That's right. So it will now be second and five from the 46-yard line of the Spartans. 
Bill stood in shotgun formation with a wingman to his left, a split receiver on each side. Running back behind him, straight pass, got a wide open receiver. Great Complete tackle. To the receiver, he's going to pick up about eight yards on the play. Enough for a Spartan first down. They're going to get to the Bulldog 47 yard line. That was a great open field tackle by the Bulldogs, number 27, Danny Watto. I mean, just a great open field tackle to prevent that from being any more damage being done. Yeah, it really was. Bill Stead to the line of scrimmage under center. A man in motion comes behind him to his left. They hand the ball straight back to Davidson. Davidson makes the move, cuts up the middle. He's got a little bit of room to run, but then his tackle is about the 38-yard line. He's going to pick up about nine yards. I guess the best way to describe his type of running style is like taking scissors and cutting in a zigzag line. He, he darts left, darts back right. And while it looks like he's not getting anywhere, he's picking up two and three yards each cut that he's taking. He's very shifty. It's hard to get a clean shot on him. Looks like there was a penalty, a major penalty, against the Spartans. That's driving them back 15 yards, man. Yeah, I didn't really see that, what the call was. It had to be a personal foul of some nature. While I'm zigging and zagging, they were counting they back. They were counting his... off yards backwards. <laughs> Bill said in shotgun formation, two receivers to his left, one, two to his right. Dropping back, he's. Pumping, pumping, now gets rid of it. Incomplete. Oh! Almost intercepted as it goes through the offensive player's hands and skips up in the air. Looks like great. <laughs> almost able to get up under that ball, uh, but not quite able to get to it in time as the ball falls and hits the carpet incomplete. Now the Spartans will face a long second and about about 20. Yeah. Dead and shotgun again. Two receivers to each side. Drop straight back. To shotgun formation going deep over the middle. Got a man wide open. Wow. It's completed. They're going to get the ball all the way down to the 25 yard line as Milstead connects with number 23. It looks like that, that was Jared, Jared Willis. Willis. Now, and all Willis did was just ran a post route in between the cushions of the zone, and that was a perfect pass by Milstead. Yeah, the yeah. freshman Milstead, we might add. Freshman. Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong. Yeah, he's a junior. Still impressive throw. Still impressive. <laughs> Milstead under center. Drops back and hands the ball straight back to Davidson. David takes one cut. Cuts out to his outside, and he's going to be able to get all the way to the 10-yard line as he picks up 15 yards on that carry. And basically wasn't even touched. That, that, was that's a great, great point right now. At the half, unofficially what we had for Davidson, he had five rushes, 55 yards in the touchdown. And Boyd, his counterpart, had eight rushes, 194 yards, and three touchdowns. Pretty saucy. Yes, sir. Milstead under center for the Spartans. Drops straight back, hands the ball off to Davidson. Davidson met immediately. He may pick up two yards on that carry. As a, a little bit better defensive job by the Bulldogs as they are able to corral him before he gets too much more. Spartans back huddling, uh, not in any hurry at all. Three minutes and ten seconds remaining in this third quarter. Milstead under center. Going to have an offset fullback with the tailback. Goes straight back, hands back to Davidson in the fullback tailback position. He's going to be just about a foot short of the goal line. As the Bulldogs prevent a score on that particular play. Sending in a couple of fresh front line defenders. The Bulldogs with Danny Watto. Dietrich Gardner come out. Zach Day looks like he comes in, and Christian Jeffries number six. If we That's who we need to get a break, break up something. Now Jeffrey need to come on in here. Millstead under center, loaded backfield top set, hands the ball back to Davidson as Davidson 
easily crosses the goal line and scores for the Spartans. So with 2.26 left in the third quarter, the Spartans score, making the score 33-3. to Extra point being attempted here by the Spartans. Number eight, Jacob Prenza, the holder. Snap is back, is down. The ball is up and right down the middle. As I believe that is number 34, it looks like. Jonathan Dalmas is a junior kicker for the Spartans. Made that look pretty easy. Made it look very easy. Got I got. I'm going to put a smile on your face. Let's do it. Not saying that we're going to do it, but, boy, wouldn't it be nice to take a road trip to Alabama to get a championship game on Sunday? That's too much. <laughs> I'll load up tonight. You love I'll start driving right now. <laughs> I might have to get a permission slip, but I don't know. What doesn't that sound great, man? Do it. <laughs> I'll take off Monday. We'll take our time coming back. With take, the our time, take, take our time. Take the scenic route, if you will. Might have that to, would be fun. We might have to get in contact with old Abe Garcia. Congratulations to the former Bulldog Shriner graduate and uh, doing a fantastic job as the Lady Panthers have advanced to the championship match for Sunday that is slated for a 12 p.m. kickoff for the championship. All the marbles. Man, wouldn't it be nice to have that on history, buddy, recorded on history? That would be nice. (laughs) The kickoff is on the way to the Bulldogs, retrieved at the 13-yard line to get across to the 20, looking for some block. Oh, slips and fall, and look like they might have been able to try to do a little something right there, as it looks like. Was that? Derek Wright on the De- run? Does DeAndre, DeAndre Blackshear. Blackshear. Trying to kind of hit it up in there and then bounce it out wide. Or actually, it wasn't wide. He tried to bring it back to the middle. Of the no, middle I'm of wide. I'm wide. He didn't get out track. that far with me. <laughs> can't, can't get around. <laughs> this footwork is unbelievable. It's unbelievable, all right. Like, man, go sit down somewhere. <laughs> Your time has passed you. Back to action now. Bulldogs, three receivers to the left. There's going to be a give to Kadu. Kadu running hard. Oh, he fell back a little awkward as he gets across to the 35-yard line. That was Derek. Kadu, Derek. It's a bulldog run. It's a bulldog run. That's all that matters. <laughs> a bulldog running back. As the Bulldogs now go back to the huddle, slowing things down. It's a minute and 55 seconds. In the third quarter, Bulldogs trailing. They gave them 35. They got 34. Did they go for two? As they, whoa, there's a pain. And a short run. And it's going to be enough to give the Bulldogs a fresh set of downs. I think what's interesting to see, Mike, is that you see one play to where a running back really hits that hole and then, the next time he gets the ball, he, it's almost like a good little tiny Tim tiptoe through the tulip. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tiptoe. I know it's got to be frustrating. With Coach's perspective, <laughs> knowing that. So now back to action. There is a give to the back yet again. Oh, and he just slung him down. There we and go. Late We're flag. finally getting some love. Wow. Right on the run, and he. They, both the Wright brothers, they run extremely hard, and they, they're not going to quit. And maybe that was <laughs> doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to throw you off there. <laughs> they run hard. But they, they, they I mean, this got hard. slung. I mean, that was like. Remember Mike Tyson in, the, in his prime? Well, what, we have, what we have here is what happened. They finally made a call. Well, this is true. We had a roughing. They had tackled Derek and then slung him down. Tyron Pomps going deep, and that was a good play by the defensive back cutting off that route. Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish as you were. Earlier in the first half, we saw where Tyron was hammered out of bounds. As a matter of fact, it was the same player by the Spartans there and just knocking five yards 
off the sideline, and the referee just runs over there and, oh, he okay? No call or anything. He, I guess he forgot he had a flag in his pocket. Not real sure. <laughs> but as he slings him down there, which is right at his footstep, almost knocked him down. I guess he, the flag may have actually fell out of his pocket. I don't know. We're back to action right now. There's a give to right, right. That's but, the kind of running we like to yes, see. Yes, sir. He maneuvers his way inside the 40 of the spot, and it is close to a bulldog first down. It's going to be third, and we'll call it about a yard and a half before the Bulldogs can get a fresh set of downs. This is a big play right here, Mike. Yes, sir. 25 seconds left in the third quarter. Bulldogs with the ball. You can say what you want. This third quarter has been like a light one. Really has. As far as the time. There's going to be another give to right, and I don't think he got it, Randy. I don't think he got it. I'm going to say it. That's one of the things that I'm talking about. He gets the ball one time, and he goes up there and tippy-toes through the tulip instead of putting his head down and going up there like a bulldozer. Makes me want to my pen. That takes us to the end of the third quarter. I believe they indicated it was a first down for the Bulldogs. So all is not lost, even though he may have tipped. They are going to extend it. While they're doing that, Randy, help us out. I apologize to my pen. Let's just go ahead and tell us who we can apologize to the paper. You threw a hole in the paper. (laughs) (laughs) We have a new sponsor with us, Prosperity Bank. Royce Ray opening up his pocketbook over there. Giving us some love. We appreciate that. (laughs) Hempstead Theater in Hempstead showing the up-to-date movies. In Waller County, recently remodeled and updated. What a fine theater that is. Waller Bulldog Club, Waller ISD booster supporters. We have the Temple of Refuge Ministries in Prairie View, Texas. And now we have the Bulldogs with the first and ten. Bulldogs now give it to right, running downhill, running through, and that was about the hardest run we've seen tonight. That made up for the tip on, did it not? No. <laughs> no. First Sorry, I first, can't. first down. First down. <laughs> Eleven for the Bulldogs. Eleven forty-seven. I'm sorry, Randy. You it's just cut up tonight. Line. First down for the Bulldogs. Going now from left to right. Three receivers to the left side for Taylor. Taylor takes it, gives it to right. Right running downhill, gets inside the twenty-five, and he is slung back to the turf. After he picks up a couple of yards, the Bulldogs, now I'm not saying this just because, but it seems like they're playing with a sense of passion right now on this particular drive. The line is firing off the ball, and, and, and maybe they're they're trying to make a statement here. Yeah, I think you're right, Mike. I mean, they're, they're coming out and definitely making a statement here. Three receivers now for Taylor, Taylor gives that ball back to right. Right runs to the left with the center of the field. Good job of the Bulldogs coming up there and making some big holes up there. Going to have about third and three. So the Bulldogs with 10-35. Did you know that they could play soccer on this field? I see that, that they haven't set up a design for that, making the most of it. Most of most of the fields, a lot of people are complaining with this synthetic turf now of links to cancer and all that kind of stuff. I don't know about all that. I'm very serious, man. We'll talk about it a little bit later. Back to action here. There's going to be a give to right who runs to the left side, Derek Bangin. Uh He may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage on there as it will bring up third down for the Bulldogs. And they're going with the no huddle look. But real quickly, they have been trying to uh, prove it with research, data, and theory that some of these uh, soccer players in particular, because soccer, believe it or not, have been playing on these synthetic fields well before the football people caught vision of it. And um, they're, they're trying to do the research and the data to disprove that or not. So it's yeah. an interesting concept going on. We have a fourth and four. Right? Fourth down and four. Three receivers to the right. Taylor rolls to his right. Throws. Off the hands of the receiver, 
and had we'll enough be for the a first down. It looks like turnover of downs. Nine twenty-eight. Really think that when you get down in that clutch time right there, you want to throw it to some of your better players. Big time players make big time plays. That's what they tell me, Coach. That's what they tell me. The ball is at the 22-yard line of the Spartans. Well, they will take over. Spartans come straight out to the line of scrimmage. Milstead, Michael Milstead for the Spartans under center with a fullback and a tailback. Hands back the ball to Davidson, the tailback. Looks like he's going to get up about eight yards on the play. They start from their 22-yard line. Looks like he's going to get out to about the 29, pick up a seven yard for the Spartans. Spartans saunter back to the huddle, waiting for the play from the sideline. Millstead not in any hurry here. 20 seconds on the play clock. We have about 8.55 left in the fourth quarter. As the Spartans break the huddle, Millstead will be under center with another fullback and tailback. Snap of the ball, turns, hands a quick handoff to the fullback. Fullback is going to have just enough for the first down, I believe, for the Spartans. They are going to move the chains. That fullback, that looks like that was number 23, Darren Willis. You know, old Madden used to have a saying. He said, Coach, if you need three yards, give me the ball. And he said, if you need seven yards, I'll get you three. (laughs) (laughs) Barton's break the huddle. First and ten from the 32-yard line. Millstead under center, turns and hands the ball to Davidson. Davidson over the right side of the line and is able to pick up another solid eight yards as he's out to the 40-yard line of the Spartans. Attacking this defense. Straight forward. They're not doing anything fancy or they're just lining up. Here we come. Second down and about three for the Spartans with 7.43 remaining in this contest. Waller Band trying to get a little thing going. Here's their playing some music and have the dancers going. And the fans visit among themselves. Spartans on the ball. Bill said under center, hands off to David. And he is uh, going to be right at the first down marker. They are going to move the chains one more time. I don't know if they're telling him, hey, we're just going to get that right at 10 yards and then stop. But they are getting 10 yards the last two first downs right at the 10-yard mark. I mean, dead money on it. Yeah, it's unusual. Well, Randy, I'll give you a couple of quick scores while they're in the huddle. Let's have it. Uh, Brenham's on top of Springwood by the score of 42 to 13. We'll give you some more after this series, after this play. Bill Stead for the Spartans under center. Turns and hands the ball off to Davidson. Davidson is going to be able to pick up three yards out to the 45-yard line of the Spartans. Going to mark the ball in the far hash mark. Are you ready for this one? More scores. Let's hear it. I've got a feeling you're going to come up with a Mag West and Magnolia score. You, you want the Mag West and Magnolia score? They are all tied, 14 apiece at halftime. Whoa, yes sir. And now, now do you understand the implications if the Bulldogs win? Uh, yes, that throws everything. That, into that, that a three-way takes everything tie. into a three-way tie. Just on a point system. And get back. Point system. Get back. As the Spartans just come <laughs> to the line of the scrimmage, Milstead under center. Hands the ball straight back to it. Looks like number 11 is Francisco Hami. I could Francisco be wrong. Francisco Hami. But that could put everything into a kink. And actually, if I'm not mistaken, if they win, that could put us out of the playoff. No, because we beat Magnolia. We but beat, Magnolia beat Mag West, and it comes down to it, the points. It, it, we get down I to don't the, think we have the favor in the points. Well, I think we would go head-to-head, then the point system. Well, head to head, we're all tied. But we beat Magnolia. But Magnolia beat Mag West. You're making things complicated. <laughs> That's how it becomes a three way tie. The Spartans come to the line of scrimmage. 
Line up, Milstead in shotgun formation, throws to his left, and the ball is incomplete. Going to have about a fourth and six, long six, almost a seven. So if I'm hearing you Martin's correct. come out in punt formation. If I'm hearing you correctly, we want Magnolia West again. Yes, he did. Left-footed kicker for the Spartans, a nice spiraling ball received by Colin Sims Davenport at the 20-yard line, and he's able to pick up about a yard on the return as he is tackled at the 21-yard line of the Bulldogs. Bulldogs will have the ball. The Spartans lead 34-3 to with 524 left in the fourth quarter. Bulldogs are lining up on the sideline, getting the offensive formation in play, ready to take the field. Well, if that being said, man, I didn't think I'd ever say this, but come on, Mustang. Bulldogs coming out now. Ball is on the far hash mark. Pistol formation. I'm not going to say that. Well, it's too late. I said it now. (laughs) Yeah, to right, right, running. Ball is taken away from right, and it's going to be a touchdown for the Spartans. Number 98 for the Spartans. Fumon Sadegi. Wow. Takes the ball from the running back. He was uh, pushing the ball up forward and uh, just took the ball from him and turned and sprinted untouched into the end zone, about 22, 23 yards. Wow. For an easy score. Sometimes that's all you can say. Mm. Wow. Mm. Spartans line up for the extra point. Jacob Prinza, the holder, with the ball down. The kick is up and good as Jonathan Dalmas completes the PAT right down the center. So an unfortunate for the Bulldogs is uh, they were actually playing to a somewhat Stagnant second half, but unable to um, get anything going there as the ball is taken from the running back. That's like stealing candy from a baby, wasn't it? Yep, 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 yep. It only took 10 seconds to get that score, too, Coach. Not good. You'd really like to chew up a little clock there. Well, that's what you thought they were gathering on the sideline over there. Hey, let's just go over here. Let's play it safe. Let's get in. Let's get out. And let's do what we got to do. And get out. Yeah. And just like that, you get a swing of momentum points. Well, the momentum had been swung long ago. Yes, sir. But I hate to say it, but it has happened. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, it was, Anyone that has ever listened, they know that we 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 love and support these kiddos. But tonight is not their night. These last three weeks have not been their weeks to roll in. No, they really haven't. So the Spartans now ready to kick off, and there's a long line driver that's retrieved the seven yard line, picked up, making defenders miss, and finally pushed out of bounds at the twenty seven yard line. Goes Wagner. And the Bulldogs will try it again. Exactly five minutes remaining in this contest. And at this point, Coach, you just don't want anyone to get hurt. I don't even think I would put Tyron back there. I would let Simon get some snaps. I believe you've made the call. Here we come. Man! I did not coach, but I did sleep at a Holiday Inn. I don't That'll make decisions for you. Yes, sir. So I believe what we have here is a whole, uh, a whole second, second squad coming in here. Yes, sir. And let's see if these guys get some double pistol formation. There's a give to the back. May have gotten huge. Line to do on the carry there is I believe he's going to get back to the line of scrimmage. Ball in the 28 yard line. So the Bulldogs right now look like they will be taking on either uh, Yates 
or North Shore, if I'm not mistaken, North Forest. North Forest, I'm sorry. We will try to find out. What I wonder we what the Yates School is. We're gonna, we're gonna, I'm glad you asked that, sir. I'm going to try to find that out. They play tomorrow, if that's not mistaken. Oh, they do? Thank we'll you, go. There is a, another give to Cadu. Cadu running Mitchell hard. Smith, Mitchell Smith. Smith. Oh, my. And moving the pile. Yes, he did. And they're going to stop his momentum. That's one of them where you just say, go ahead and let him get the first down. Yeah, really. Mostly uh, second string offensive players here. It's Ray Simons at the quarterback. Mitchell Smith doing running back with Jacob Cadu. Coach is trying to take a little time getting a play in as the play clock gets down to 11, 10, and 9. Bulldogs break the huddle with five seconds left on the play clock. Trying to get set. Double pistol snap the ball just in time of the play clock. To do running hard, able to pick up another two yards. We're going to have about fourth and one for the Bulldogs as they get all the way out to the 36-yard line. It would be nice to see the Bulldogs get this first down right here and keep the ball for the last three minutes. Keep the ball and keep the clock running as we are at 3.05 left in the game. Number 14, Christian Stubblefield enters the game. About fourth and one, the Bulldogs are in a shotgun formation with the running back on the right and left. Not, oh, and second a effort. great second effort there by Mitchell Smith. And he should have enough for the first down. And he does. And Good he job. does. That was definitely a second effort by Mitchell Smith to get that. He was hit at the line of scrimmage and kind of halfway spun uh, to get off of that tackle to gain the first down. Well, I'm trying to find these scores for you, Coach. So with 2.25 left in the ball game, the Bulldogs have a first down from the 37-yard line. Ray Simon in shotgun formation, hands the ball to Mitchell Smith. Mitchell Smith around the left edge, cuts up, and he's going to be able to pick up about three, maybe four yards for the Bulldogs. Well, good job of him getting outside there and seeing a little crease and trying to get up inside that. Picks up a good three yards for the Bulldogs. They're going to have about second down and seven. Christian Stubblefield running the play in. Ray Simon doing the quarterback duties as the final few couple of minutes of the fourth quarter wind down. Have about 140 left in the ball game. Simon in shotgun formation. Hands the ball to Jacob Cadu. As he comes around the right side, and he's going to pick up about one yard as they get past the 40, up to the 41-yard line. So we do have that Madison will be playing Yates tomorrow at tomorrow. 1 p.m. at Barnett Stadium. I might have to go do a little. You may have to do a Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm going to go scout out the ducks. Yeah, I heard you with your duck. Where's your duck duck call at? My daughter took it. She was going to try to call up some ducks if they could land on that green pasture out there. <laughs> <laughs> Mitchell Smith on the handoff. Goes right up the middle. He's going to get out through the 45-yard line. going to be about two yards short as the Bulldogs call timeout. With about 43 seconds left, but they're going to let the clock run on down a little bit. 38. Try to get a few more seconds <laughs> off of that clock. Try you noticed that, huh, Coach? You ain't getting nothing past you, man. <laughs> I'm just trying to be the eyes of the listeners. The eyes of the listeners. And you've done a great job with that, sir. Oh, Chris Carroll walking down underneath us there. The former football player from Waller. ISD. Time out here, 38 seconds left. Bulldogs will end. Will it have still been a very productive season? 
at seven and three overall. Seven and three, and and but you you got to be a bit concerned that the last three games you lost going into the playoff stretch. See how that unfolds in a, next week. There's a give to Mitch. Is that could do? Could do. I'm sorry. Could do running hard for a first down. Do good job running right up the gut. He picks up about twelve, ten, oh, about ten yards for the Bulldogs. Clock winds down, 29 seconds left. The Bulldogs huddle. Ray Simon in the backfield. Two running backs, one to his left, one to his right. Snap his back, hand off to Jake Cadu. Cadu's trying to make a statement there saying, I'm the one that should have been in there. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. Today, look at me. I should be in the back in field. field. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is going to take us down. Our debut, singing debut, that is done free. just as it started. We threw that in for free. Buy the CD is coming out real soon. Bulldogs, take one on the chin. 41 to 3 is our final score. We are going to try to run through some quick scores if we can. Randy, this one has been all but over with. I know we got a couple of games that we're concerned about. At least I know uh, the Bulldog faithful are concerned about. That's that Magnolia West and that Magnolia Bulldog game. As they're battling things out, we'll try to get us an update here as the the Magnolia West Mustangs are now leading by the score of 17 to 14. A field goal. A field goal has given the Mustangs the lead as time is, left, time is 636 remaining in the third quarter. Oh, third with a lot of game. A lot of game is left. Meanwhile, Tumball Memorial has had complete control over Tumball battling out in that Patriots game. They're winning 48 to 7 with 606 remaining in that third fourth quarter play. Now, going back to this Magnolia West Magnolia game, they're just in the third quarter. They must have had some type of extended halftime to be that late in the game. Yeah, they must have. And let's you, see. You know what though, we may have been running on a running clock this half. Yeah, may maybe, maybe, who knows? Meanwhile, the Hempstead Bobcats positioning themselves for their playoff run. They're winning by the score of 27 to 12. Now, let's go back on that. Did, did Who won the Hitchcock Hempstead game? Hempstead. So they're sole possession of first sole place. Sole possession of first place. They, they, they will have a they, district championship. They will, yes, they will have another district championship. And That's speaking good. of Hitchcock, Hitchcock is all over industrial by the score of 36 to 7. Let's see what we got going on. The Royal Falcons are trailing Columbus by the score of 21 to 7 at halftime. 21 to 7. At least that's what it was saying on our last data. Redham victorious over Springwood 42 to 13. So, coach, if we're looking at this right now, Stratford goes to 7 and 0. Brenham will go to 6 and 1. Waller has dropped to four and three. Mag West by the end of the night will either be four and three or three and four. And Mag West, I mean Magnolia will end up four and four. If they win, they'll be four and three. If they win if Mag if Mag West wins. If Mag West wins, they'll be four and three. They'll be four and three. But then if Magnolia wins, they'll be four and four. No, no, they'll be four uh, Four 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 and three. That's yeah. right. All three of us will be four and three. That would be ugly. It'd be bad news. I'm gonna keep my eyes toes. Can I cross my ears? I can try. I can try to find the watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Bulldogs will be playing next week, and we'll be there. We'll be there wherever it may be. Right now, it is projected. There will be a Coward, Coward Stadium in the lovely confines of Houston, Texas, 
as the Bulldogs will go back and reload for next week, uh, try to make things happen. But you you got to give credit. They were playing with a short hand. Uh, Eric Wright hopefully will be healthy, strong, and kicking well as the Bulldogs will try to make their run. This will be the second playoff run for the Bulldogs in as many years. Uh, we will be there to give you the coverage as they get ready to kick and swing to the Bulldog song. Randy, any final thoughts and comments for yeah, tonight? Yeah, you know, just, uh, you know, yes, they are playing shorthanded, but you definitely would have liked to have seen them play a little bit cleaner, uh, you know, mentally sharp game as far as, uh, you know, try to cut your errors out, penalty, you know, and tough situations. You want to at least give yourself a chance. But, uh, you know, hopefully they can learn from this and, and put things together next week. And, and uh, you know, we'll just kind of see where the where the chips fall. And uh, we're going to be there supporting them, giving them our all. As we get ready here, the Bulldogs' total offense tonight was giving up 324 rushing yards off of 28 touches. Bulldogs ended up with 205 yards. So total, five total? Well, the to- total, 205-yard total rushing total. yards for the Bulldogs, 307 yards total offense for the Bulldogs. For Stratford, they had a total of 405 yards total offense. And on that note, we will be saying good night from Tully Stadium. The Bulldogs yield the championship to the Stratford Spartans as they just displayed that across the, the billboard that the Stratford Spartans are the 2014 District 19 5A champions. Congratulations to them. I'm Mike Prince. He's Randy Allen saying God bless. and We will see you guys next week. Good night and be safe.